Oh, good evening, Retronauts. Uh, this is Michael McCabe, Paleoferrosaurus, and uh, this key punch is the subject of my 2012 Retro Challenge. The key punch isn't in particularly good shape, but then again, it was built in 1949, so uh, it's been around and it's uh, seen some action. We're going to take a look at a few of the parts that I'm working on right now, and maybe you'll sort of see the state of uh, just what I'm up against. Okay, the first piece I've been working on is the keyboard itself, and uh, like many keyboards, uh, it was mechanically encoded. Now we're going to flip this over and actually show you how that works here in a moment. Alright, looking at the uh, flipped over keyboard, we see the individual code bars, which when depressed, convert uh, that key to its binary, or rather Hollerith, representation. Hollerith code is a 12-bit code, and the code bars move one of the code switches on the right and left of the keyboard. I'll get a shot of the other side there to produce the ASCII or the rather Hollerith code value. These uh, switches up top actually uh, serve to uh, sequence the operation of the machine itself, rather than uh, contributing to the code. There are also a number of solenoids. Uh, take a look at one of them here. Maybe. Here's a solenoid on the reset bale. When a key is depressed and the code is read, an electrical impulse is sent to the solenoids to then keel, uh, to clear the keyboard. Since it's mechanically encoded, the keyboard is actually locked until that key release impulse is sent. Okay, we're looking at the right hand side of the key punch. These are the uh, vacuum tubes used to actually trigger the solenoids that operate the punch knives that uh, punch the holes in the cards. We have uh, a number of these that are actually bad at the moment. I'm looking for replacements, but uh, not holding my breath. Okay, now we're looking at the uh, electronic compartment in the back of the key punch. You can see a bank of uh, telephone relays here that are actually used to operate uh, many of the solenoids and motors that uh, make the machine run. Uh, these are on a swing-out gate. IBM seems to have been very big on swing-out gates and you can swing the gate out to uh, get to the back of the relays and the actual wiring. The wiring here was uh, done with uh, individual wires or no circuit boards and as you can see those were manually bound into uh, taped wiring harnesses that go to various parts of the machine. One of my big problems is this bugger here. This is a selenium rectifier and you can see there are a couple more selenium rectifiers on the other side. These uh, basically serve as diodes. They convert alternating current to direct current, and in my case, uh, they've actually gone bad. When they go bad, they uh, let out the magic blue smoke, which just happens to be pretty toxic. So I'm looking for some way of replacing these uh, stacks of selenium rectifiers here. Other electronic parts include power resistors, which you can see on uh, posts there and one really big capacitor back here. Looking at the mechanical part of the uh, key punch, I'll zoom out here, you can see that one large motor actually drives the key punch and uh, through a series of uh, electromagnetic clutches and drive shafts and gears moves all the little bits and pieces of the machine. Hopefully we'll show you that turning in a minute, and you can see how some of the uh, mechanical linkages work. Okay, as you should be able to hear, the motor is turning, and you can see that uh, a couple of the belts here are in pretty bad shape, but they're still uh, fulfilling their function. The uh, Mechanical parts, parts of this key punch work on what's called a clutch cycle, and we'll trigger a clutch cycle so you can see how everything turns here. 
Basically, uh, this solenoid here fires, engaging a clutch. The shaft turns and cards are fed. The actual punch knives, located back in there, are operated by individual solenoids. And the uh, timing of the entire machine is controlled by this uh, cam switch. Uh, well, actually, several cam switches on a common camshaft that rotates uh, once per clutch cycle. Now, I've got a lot of work to do here, obviously. Uh, this is pretty old, pretty grungy. But I'm hoping to at least punch a few holes in cards with it. And if we get the vacuum tubes back, uh, we may actually get to do some key punching here before the end of the Retro Challenge. This is Paleoferrosaurus uh, signing off for now. Bye-bye.